Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is September 25th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about multiple tropical cyclone threats to Japan over the coming days and what looks like the next 10 day period. First in the form of Trami, which right now is a super typhoon and second in the form of a number of tropical weather systems that could produce a, a second potential severe storm strike following Trammies in, in the next 10 day time frame. So first looking at Trammy, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center presently has a major super typhoon producing winds of 115 knots with gusts, gusts up to 149 knots and converting that to miles per hour, 115 knots runs in the range of 132 miles per hour, which is a very severe storm. According to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, the storm is expected to track off to the north and then the northwest before recurving toward Japan. By September 29th, the storm is expected to threaten Japan as a major tropical cyclone with winds roughly equivalent to that of a Category 3 hurricane and make landfall or brush the southern section of Japan as a strong Category 2 or weak Category 3 storm. Some of the model runs are showing Trami approaching Japan and threatening Japan as, as a major hurricane in the range of a Category 3. This model, the HWRF model, showing a 945 millibar storm approaching the southern coast of Japan by Sunday, September 30th. 945 millibars is roughly equivalent to a very strong Category 3 storm or possibly just getting into the edge of, of a weak Category 4 storm. So this particular model showing a a super typhoon or a near super typhoon strength system approaching southern Japan by Sunday. Looking at some of the GFS models, and again the GFS model has GFS model has tended to predict very severe intensities for Trami and a follow-on storm. This should be taken with a, with a bit of a grain of salt as the GFS model has tended to run a bit strong, but if the GFS model forecast does emerge, it, it would represent a serious threat for Japan. I'm going to go ahead and run this model. So we can see the GFS model bringing Trami down to the 900 millibar strength as it tracks toward Japan. I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And that would be a, a very, very severe tropical cy cyclone approaching Japan. It's worth noting that as Trami gets close to Japan in the GFS model, the millibar range rises to around 927, which though still very strong in, in the extreme range as, as a strong category four storm is, is not comparable to, to Category 5 intensity, but it's, it's still an extraordinarily powerful storm in this GFS model approaching Japan and crossing Japan as a Category 4 storm in the GFS model. The follow-on storm in this model is, is also rather concerning, showing a 928 millibar storm by Monday as Trami impacts the southern section of Japan. I'm going to go ahead and run the model further. So again, the model brings the second storm in a Category 5 equivalent range. I'm going to go ahead and reverse the model so you can see this. So this GFS model has a, a Category 5 equivalent intensity storm 
super typhoon approaching Japan on October 4th, Thursday, October 4th, and maintaining near Category 5 strength in the GFS model and maybe dipping down to very strong Category 4 status as it strikes the coast of Japan in this model by late Thursday, October 4th, then rapidly runs across the south-central section of Japan. Again, this forecast should be taken with a bit of a grain of salt, but it is a very disturbing forecast. And if Japan were to receive two hurricane strikes from such powerful systems back to back, it, it would be a, a serious event resulting in, in major impacts for large sections of southern Japan and greatly reducing emergency response capabilities due to the back-to-back -back nature of this predicted strike in the GFS model. So something to keep an eye on. Looking at climate change related features, the sea surface temperatures near Japan are still ranging much warmer than normal. TRAMI is presently tracking through oceans that are about 0.5 degrees Celsius above normal, but will get into oceans that are near 2 degrees Celsius above normal as it tracks toward the southern coast of Japan along the present forecast track according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. In addition, any other follow-on storm would run through oceans that are about 1 degree Celsius above normal or more as it tracks toward the southern coast of Japan as well. These warmer than normal sea surface temperatures provide more fuel for storms in the form of convective energy. And it's also worth noting that atmospheric water vapor and precipitable moisture range very high in this region with forecast conditions expected to bring very high atmospheric water vapor levels with the predicted approach of two powerful tropical cyclone systems by September 29th. So a potentially very dangerous situation for Japan if some of the model forecasts end up being correct. Certainly something for all interests in Japan and the section of the Pacific Ocean to keep an eye on and monitor as such a double strike would, would produce very severe, severe impacts for this region, region of the Western Pacific. It's worth mentioning that these storms have a number of human-caused climate change fingerprints on them, including warmer than normal ocean temperatures providing more fuel for these storms, as well as high atmospheric water vapor levels also feeding into these systems. As with recent storm strikes, these storms will run in on higher than normal sea levels, thereby increasing storm surge impacts as well. And Japan has already suffered the strike of two major hurricanes this year, Cimarron and Jebi. A back-to-back -back double strike would compound impacts for Japan from heat waves to severe rainfall to multiple severe hurricane strikes for this summer. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.